just got out of the shower. <laughs> um, it's Catfish Friday. Um, first, before we even get into all of this, I just want to say to you guys, it is really fucking important, um, at least in my personal opinion. A, a lot of people told me that, oh, when you start doing yoga, dude, this is going to change the way you feel, your depression, your anxiety, all of that stuff is going to go away. You're going to feel so much better. Blah, blah, blah. Go the fuck away. Blah, blah, blah. That did not help me do that. Yoga was an integral part of my practice. I still enjoy yoga, but it did not do anything for me but help me with discipline. And so um, I... Uh, I, I think that the thing that really works the most for me personally is meditation. And um, this one highlights right here. Well, that one looks better than the other one. Look at that. It's so weird, right? These are like some full on. <laughs> I think I grabbed the wrong pair this morning, but whatever. Um, so I think that, that, um, uh, meditation is probably the most important thing and has really helped me with my panic and anxiety. It has helped me to learn to slow down and not feel like I have to um, lash out every single time. Like it gives me some time to really uh, process stuff and think about what am I going to say? How am I going to handle this? Am I going to say anything? All of that um, is part of what I have been trying to work through because for me, um, my rejection, my fear of abandonment all comes out as a screaming fucking banshee mess. So I, uh, again, I'm starting to pull cards that are the same, the ones I always pull. And today I pulled the Eight of Discs, and um, I like to talk about what it's what it is in a traditional tarot deck. So the Eight of Discs is the Eight of Pentacles in traditional tarot, and it is about mastering a craft. You, there's a kid, and he is carving the pentacles, and there's seven on the wall, and the eighth one's on the on the table, and he is still working. He is really working to master this craft of woodworking or whatever it is. Um, so. In a way, this card is the same. Um, it is skillful perseverance, which means there, you have to really um, continue to work. And, and that was sort of what yesterday's card really was. Hey, Kristen, uh, was about, it's not gonna happen overnight, chickadoo. You have work to do, and you need to continue to just keep moving forward. And the thing on this card that is the most important besides the woman who is standing next to it, the shadow animal, this is an animal in spirit that is an elk, and, and an elk does not move very fast. It's, um, that's so weird, Some, we have our doors are on like electron, oh here it's, yeah, it's um, the, um, we, the, the elk moves very slowly, but he has a big gait when he walks. So he's able to move forward in big strides, but very slowly. So I think I'm biting off big chunks of the lessons and I'm, I, I'm taking on big lessons, big, big things to learn, but those are taking me a little longer. So I've got a lot of a lot of space that I'm covering, but I'm just going a little slowly absorbing it and making it a part of my psyche because it makes perfect sense when the fact that you have neural pathways that you have, have forged for so many years that help you to react in the same way that you always have reacted. If now you're rewiring your brain to, to not behave in a fashion that you used to, it's going to take a little bit to, you, you know, six decades of oh, you're pissing me off, oh, you're hurting me, oh, you don't respect me, oh, you're rejecting me, to not just turn around and bite your head off because that would be my normal response would be to let me just fucking burn the house down because that feels better to me right now. 
So um, I'm trying to look at my notes here to see what else, because there's more to it. It requires me to turn off my autopilot response and actually be present in the moment and think about what it is that I'm trying to say to somebody. Because the best words can be spoken to someone, but if they're spoken in a hostile way or a condescending manner or both, the message that you're trying to, to, to send to somebody might be the message that they need to hear, but it makes them feel like dog shit or you're making them feel threatened or whatever it is. And so now they're not gonna receive that message. So there's better ways of, of telling people the things you need to tell them to explain to them your boundaries of, of why they're crossing over them, what is hurting you about what they're saying and doing so that you don't hurt them too in the process because that's really the, the thing that at least for me that I'm trying to do is, hey, this seems disrespectful. Hey, this hurt me when you said so that I can explain to people where my boundaries are and where the disrespect is coming from, where I see it coming from so that they don't all of a sudden just go into a defensive posture and want to fight with me because that's not what I'm trying to do. That's old me. Old me doesn't want to do or new me doesn't want to do that. Numi is trying to not have as much cortisol in her system so she doesn't have belly fat. That's the whole gig. It's very selfish. Um, I'm also learning that not every single thing that somebody says to me, posts on my wall, or says to anybody else that I care about deserves or should have any kind of commentary from me. I mean, who the fuck am I to jump into somebody's live stream and explain things to them? Most people um, aren't going to take that very well, and I just have to let things go. Sometimes people come to you, and all they want to do is vent. They want to tell you how it is. They want to tell you how you hurt them. They don't really give a shit about what you're going through. And it, the lesson for me is that's not about me. Even if what they're saying to me is about me. So if they're saying that I'm doing something to them and I know in my heart that I'm not that I'm not doing that thing, I understand that that's a mirror being held up. I'm showing them something in what I'm doing or whatever. And sometimes they have valid points in what they're saying. You wouldn't like it if this happened to you. You you said that you didn't like it when people did this to you and yeah, you're absolutely right. And I need to handle that differently because People let you down. They don't do it. I truly don't think that people fuck around with other people on purpose. I do not think that that 95% of us walk around trying to figure out how the fuck can we mess with somebody today? How can I fuck up this person's world today? So you just got to kind of like decide, am I going to own this story that someone's telling? And also... I think the minute that you feel that disrespect or you feel like somebody's not getting what you're laying down or you're hurt by something, you need to immediately go to the person and say, hey, you did this and it hurt me. Instead of holding on to it for a really long time so that the first little thing that they do, um, it's still working here for me, so I don't know if it's on your end or not, Kristen. Um, the, the, so that you don't take, you don't hold this stuff inside of you forever and ever or until one day something happens and maybe not even be the person that you're harboring all of this guilt and sadness and stuff for or somebody else does something and you fucking explode on them. It's much better to say what you need to say right away and get it out so that all of that stuff can go by the wayside and you're not just harboring crap because it's, it doesn't help you at all and another person probably doesn't know and so you know and sometimes I'm just going to be straight up with you I'm not going to always own stuff when you come to me and tell it to me I've owned way too much shit that didn't belong to me I have been the reason why people's lives were fucked up for way too long for me to always accept that I am the reason why you feel like shit. I have learned that a lot of people hold mirrors up for me 
and the shit that I see that I think I don't like about somebody else really has more to do with me than the person that I'm thinking I'm having an issue with. So I try to now step back and out of the situation. I told you guys yesterday, and I'm going to tell it to you again, I have actively worked to stay out of other people's shit on purpose in the last couple of weeks because A, my therapist asked me to do that, and B, because I, I'm trying to learn how to control myself as delicious as, I, uh, as it would be because I love a good fight. I am staying out of shit even when people are coming for me and I know they're coming for me in a passive aggressive fucking way, I am not going to entertain that until somebody actually comes to me and talks to me about it. And then I'll, I'll entertain it because I have love and respect for most of the people that are gonna have the balls to come to me, but that doesn't always mean I'm gonna own the thing they're trying to lay down. I don't, I'm not trying to hurt anybody, I'll apologize if I see that there's a need for that, but I'm not, I'm not gonna own shit that doesn't belong to me. I'm not going to let somebody else now write my fucking story and tell me what I am and tell me that my story doesn't matter and that they're going to discount it because of this stuff that happened to them. Now, this is what I put out is for me more than it's for anybody else, but you don't get to come and tell me <laughs> that you guys should too. I know this especially when you're mad. I mean, if we are just sitting around talking about the bad things that happened to us, the abuse that we've suffered at parents, the lovers, the spouses, hands, whatever, that's one thing. But if you're upset with me and I tell you, here's why I'm doing what I'm doing. And you decide what you're going to say to me is, well, I got shit too. And that doesn't give you a right to be that way. It sort of does. And you sort of need to have some compassion for what that person's going through, especially when they give you the reason for why it is. And it isn't really about you. It's, it's not about you. It's about me. And so I, I choose to step back, not say anything, so I don't go crazy, get out of control, and fuck shit up worse. So the theme for the weekend is how can we live our lives, keep boundaries, and not fuck shit up in the process? So that's really all I got for today. Um, going to... Um, go to the grocery store and get ready for tomorrow's big uh, blue moon and probably do happy hour. Bob's not coming up tonight because he's working his little fucking ass off. And so he'll be here tomorrow and I, at least I'm getting some stuff done around the house that I probably need to and I'm pretty sure there'll be a vodka and hair metal in my future. Peace.